Hello and welcome to the vlog. Bit of a sort of update vlog really. Not a lot happening at the moment. I'm just kind of living on board and not a great deal to tell you about. But I have been shopping and I have got a DIY task to undertake. So let's start with the shopping. I was doing my normal food shop in Tesco's but I picked up a couple of bits for the boat as well. Starting with this which as you can see is a mop. Uh, it's got a couple of little tricks up its sleeve. First of all, the handle is extendable, so I should be able to prod it down into any bit of the boat I want to prod it down into. And also, the um, mop bit itself is detachable, removable, throw away, so when that gets too disgusting, I can just buy a fairly cheap replacement, chuck that one, and stick the new one on. The reason I bought this, if you've seen my previous blogs talking about the engine, you'll know that as I go along, it is very gently leaking a bit of oil and water. Not a huge amount, not a disastrous amount, but certainly by the end of each journey, you peer down into the engine bilge and there is oily water underneath it. I don't like having an oily, watery bilge and I would like that cleared up. I was, of course, using nappies for the purpose, but the thing with the nappies is you have to drop them down there and then find a stick or something to shuggle them around in the water with and then try and reach out and pick them all up. And do you know what? A mop kind of does that all in one. You've got the stick to juggle it around with, you've got the end of it to mop up the water. So I thought, let's just get a mop and do it with that. And there is a little bit of oil and water in the bilge at this moment. So let's go and sort that out. The other thing I bought while I was in Tesco's was this, which is a little LED torch. It's got three LEDs at the front here, on and off. There's no degrees of brightness, it's just either on or off, but that's perfectly fine. But like the mop, this has a trick up its sleeve, namely, it is extendable, which is rather splendid. So again, I can prod this down into inaccessible areas, hopefully, and see what I'm doing. But better than that, not only is it extendable, but the head is bendable into whatever angle you want. So this really is excellent for an engine room where you can prod it right behind the engine and still light up whatever bit you're trying to actually see behind. But more than that still, on the front here, it is magnetic. And even on the back, it is magnetic. So I can prod it down into the engine bay, see whatever I've dropped down in there, and then hopefully pick it up. I know for a fact, there's one bolt which I took off the battery which somehow managed to drop down there and I'll be able to pick it up again with this torch. So that is pleasing. This cost me £7.50. It's got a little hook on it there which feels a little insubstantial but you could hook it onto your belt or something if you wanted to with that. The only slight disappointment with this, it didn't say on the packaging what type of batteries it takes and I looked at that and I thought well Clearly that takes an AA cell or perhaps a AAA cell, but oh no, it doesn't. You have to unscrew the head to get to the batteries, and in there you find this little funny container with four watch batteries in it. They're LR44 watch battery cells, four of them. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't keep a stash of LR44 watch battery cells. I've got loads of AAs and AAAs, but not a stash of watch batteries. So I assume that being LED, those batteries will power it for a reasonable time because LEDs don't take much power. But nonetheless, they're not going to last as long, I don't think, as a full-on, what I would call a proper battery. Um, and I'll have to go and buy a little stash. Apart from that, I'm pretty pleased. I, I, I like that torch. I think that's going to come in very handy indeed. The other thing I mentioned at the start of this vlog is that I have a DIY task to undertake. It's not so much a DIY task as the preparations for someone else to come in and do the DIY, and it is electrical. Let me show you. This is the cupboard at the front of my boat, and inside you can see on the right there, there is a mains power socket, and it is running both the television up there and also the little TV booster thing, which is that box just there in the corner. Now, it's all very well having a main socket there, 
But if I want to run anything else out of it, it means I have to leave the cupboard door open. And frankly, that's inelegant and ugly, and I would rather have the door closed. So, where else might there be power sockets on the boat? Let's have a look. This is the saloon, and looking round, no, I don't see any power sockets. And that's because the next one is actually in the galley, behind the microwave, a single socket there. And it's not very convenient to run anything else out of that socket as well, because if I go back a little bit, you can see we're right next to the fire, and you don't really want trailing extension cables coming past that, especially past the stove pipe, which gets very hot. So that is not a useful socket for anything except the microwave. Any other sockets that might be usable in the galley? Uh, nope. So let's take a look at the dinette area. Any power sockets? Oh, none here either. In fact, you have to go all the way to the bedroom, down the back of the bed, and down there, which you can't really see, there is a power socket. Now, it's not that I've got loads and loads of things I want to be running off the mains, but in the saloon, it just would be handy to have a couple more sockets. And one I want to put in that corner there, so that potentially I could put a washing machine in that space, so that when I'm plugged into shore mains, I can run the washing machine. And I'd like another one down by the side of the dinette, so that if I'm sitting at the dinette table, perhaps working on the computer, I don't have to run that extension lead all the way from the bedroom. OK, it's not a major crisis, but it's a minor hassle, and I'd just like to have a little double socket there. So I've bought 15 metres of this stuff, which is 2.5 millimetre Arctic mains cable, and apparently it's Arctic because it still remains flexible at minus 40 degrees centigrade. Now here's the tricky part. We know there is mains on this side of the boat, in that cupboard, and behind the microwave. But the only mains on this side of the boat is that socket in the bedroom. So I'm going to have to run cable from here all the way back up to the back of the boat and connect them up. And that means I'm going to have to run a cable from there, down the back of this unit, along the bottom, behind the refrigerator, behind the dinette, through into here, round the back of the bathroom, into the bedroom, past the cupboards, and ultimately to down the back of the bed. And that is quite a long cable run, since of course I want to do it all along the edge of the boat. And that is going to require an awful lot of prodding and poking with the wire, and a lot of optimistic hoping I can squeeze it through bits of ducting without having to rip the whole thing apart. There is one bit of good news though, and it involves the fridge. You see, the fridge obviously has power. It is a 12 volt fridge, and when we look behind, what do we see? That magical thing, ducting, that goes all the way down the side of the boat back to the engine room, past the bedroom. So if I'm very lucky, I'm going to be able to squeeze my cable in there and just keep pushing it and hope for the best and it'll come out in the bedroom and I can connect it up to that main socket. Right, things started out promisingly. You can see that ducting there. This is underneath the dinette and I was pushing the cable quite happily down there but it has now reached an obstruction and I don't know where. Exciting news, if, like me, you are excited about this kind of thing. As you can probably see, I'm in the bottom of the bathroom sink unit here. There are the water pumps. They too, of course, draw 12 volts power, which comes along that same bit of ducting. Now, what you may or may not be able to see is there is a little hole behind that pup pump in the ducting where their wires come out. And I can see that my new blue cable has passed that point and that means if it's gone down that way, I'm practically behind the bed, and then I should just be able to pull it by dismantling the bed. Hurrah! Welcome to what's underneath my bed. The big green thing is my hot water tank, and over there, where's it gone? Somewhere down there, the blue thing 
is the accumulator tank. Anyway, the point is, you can probably just see the white ducting running all the way along the back there. And if I get some light on it, that's where it comes through from the bathroom. Now, we have a problem here in as much as the ducting appears to be one single piece running the entire length of the boat. So I can't pull the front off it because it goes through all these bulkheads and they will prevent me getting the front off. So I can't just pull it off and pull the cable through. I'm going to have to keep pushing and that's annoying. A few minutes later and slightly out of breath, I've got fed up and completely dismantled the bed now. So you can see under it there again is the accumulator, all the pipe work from the engine and the Aberspatcher unit. There's the hot water cylinder if the camera would focus. And behind it all is the ducting, which finally leads down here to that main socket where I'm hoping to tie in the new cable. Or at least I say I'm hoping to tie in. I'll get Simon to do it because I'll blow myself up with mains electrics. Can I just say, ta-da! There is my wire coming through the bulkhead from the bathroom. Had an almighty job trying to pry off this cable ducting, but eventually with a bit of bent wire managed to get it apart and then found that the cable was just there. So I can now pull it through. Right, some progress seems to be being made. As you can see, I have pulled the cord through and uh, it goes across there and there's enough hanging out the end to go up to the socket. So now I'm just putting the ducting back on top of it. And there we go. Job done. Although, of course, now I'm ultra paranoid that in all that mucking about, I'll have somehow disturbed the water pipes or the existing electrics and it's all going to go disastrously wrong. But that is the paranoia of owning a boat and trying to do stuff yourself. As far as I can tell, it's all good. It just needs an electrician to come and wire up the actual sockets now. Terrific. <laughs>